If you're someone who's carrying some debt, student loans, credit cards, I don't know, car finance, and you're now looking to get a mortgage, whether it's a purchase, a remortgage, or an investment property, you really need to know about the debt to income ratio rule, which is unpublished by many of the lenders, but it's out there and you need to be aware of it. So let's talk about it. Hey, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Right, I thought I'd talk about a very important point that's gonna come up with uh, mortgage applications, whether it's a purchase or it's a remortgage. Uh, and this point is very prevalent uh, around January, February time as people are looking to purchase properties. And the point is around your debt, the level of debt you're going in before you go for the mortgage application. There's a rule, uh, and it's an unwritten rule for many lenders called the income to debt ratio, okay? So we're gonna talk about this. Let's take a, um, a purchase application for one, okay? So, uh, and that's prompted me because I'm literally, I had an inquiry this morning on this and I've had to phone various lenders on it. So, got a client, wants, is, is mortgage free on one property, wants to buy a new property with his missus, okay? But he's carrying quite a lot of large credit card debts. So I think he's got 15K, she's got 20K worth of credit card debts. So, good income, over 100K income, right? So, um, so that's the debt. They've also got, um, you know, like a student loan, bits and pieces. So there's quite a lot of unsecured debt there, right? Now, um, this hits the income debt, income to debt ratio rules for many, many lenders. Like I said, it's an unpublished uh, rule. Many of them just don't say it. It's just internally, they'll take a view on it. Now, there are some lenders that have got specific rules. Some lenders will say, look, the debt cannot be more than 25% of the income, for example, the applicant's income. Some would say 50% of the income. Some would say there is no uh, income to debt ratio at all. As long as it looks okay, it looks like manageable, they're not defaulting or anything, they're not missing payments, they're okay with it. So they don't actually have a rule, okay? Um, some have got, um, uh, so some, of, some of the rules around it are a bit tricky. So they go, well, we don't have a rule, but our underwriters will be assessing it. And then, as a broker um, or as an applicant, you've got to look at other things, okay? If they're saying we don't have a rule, okay, fine, and, and we individual, individually uh, assess all cases, fine, okay, then you've got to start looking and go, okay, well, is it a soft footprint when, I, when you have a look at it, when you do an agreement in principle, or is it a hard footprint? Because that will have a bearing, okay? It might be better to go with a lender that's got a soft footprint because if they're saying if they're going to just take a look at it, you don't you don't want your credit report getting hammered, okay? So um, income to debt ratios, you've got some lenders that are really bad with it. Um, I'm not going to start naming them lenders because for compliance reasons, but what I would say is there are known lenders that are really bad with income to debt ratios, not only for residential, importantly, but also for buy-to-let mortgages, which is quite unusual, okay? There are some lenders that have got income to debt ratios for buy-to-let mortgages, okay? Now, when you're dealing with income to debt, when it's a purchase, it's a little bit tricky because from a compliance perspective, if an applicant is coming to you and saying, um, you know, I've got this debt, but I'm managing it, yeah, it's on 0% interest or I'm, um, I, I'm making the payments. I'd rather not put it on a secured environment. You know, at the end of the day, what I mean by that is if you stop paying your credit card bill, they're not going to repossess your house because it's an unsecured form of debt, okay? And a lot of clients come back to me and say, look, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. I, I, I'm repaying this and, and I'm comfortable with it. Obviously, the new lender's got to take a different view because they'll say, look, you might be getting a larger mortgage now. You're taking on more commitments. They don't like, the, the whole reason around it is they don't like someone who can utilize that much debt at one time. They don't like the fact that people have got access to so much credit and, and have used up that credit, okay, for whatever reason. Um, so that's one of the points. Also, another point is they don't care whether you're going to pay it off. Some lenders, where they've got quite strict income to debt ratios, say you go to them with £20,000 worth of debt or £30,000 worth of debt, but you say, before I complete on the mortgage, I'm going to clear all of this stuff. I don't know, my mum's going to give me £20,000 to clear this stuff up. They'll go, no, you'll still get declined. The reason behind that is they don't like the fact that you've taken on this debt. And what they're worried about is you take a mortgage, they give you a mortgage, they give you a high mortgage, say four and a half times, five times your income, 
And then a week later, you fancy a car, and rather than going buying a Ford Fiesta, you go and buy yourself a, I don't know, a Porsche on debt. So there are, that's their reasoning. Now, lenders, they have rules, sort of standardized rules. Now, there are many of the times that I've dealt with clients, um, it's to do with, you know, they've done home improvements, you know, rather than paying a high loan rate, they've stuck it on the credit card or uh, it's a short-term facility and they thought they can refinance it. So it's not always about people, you know, geared up in credit cards because they can't afford their lifestyle. Um, and that's why it's important you understand this rule. Um, more important when you're dealing with remortgages, okay? Because remortgages, um, uh, that's where it gets tricky because a lot of the lenders then uh, have strict rules around debt consolidation, why you've built up the debt. Um, they want to see that, you know, you, you know, let's say you did a remortgage two years ago, what was the reason for that? Was that debt consolidation? Um, but really, my the point around this is, look, if you're carrying some loans, some unsecured debt here and there, watch out for that point. Speak, bring it to the attention of your broker. Hopefully your broker will, uh, will notice it. But you'd be surprised. I've, I've got so many uh, inquiries where people have been declined by one particular lender and that lender is just you know absolutely blatant if you've ever done business with them uh, and, and you've had to uh, disclose unsecured commitments you would know that that lender is not the right lender to go with doesn't matter what their rates are that lender is not the right, the right lender if you're carrying a lot of unsecured debt so that's the income to debt ratio like I said not a lot of lenders if you go to the lending criteria on the websites there not a lot of them have got this in there. So it's a little hidden gem there for you guys to know about. Hopefully you find this useful. If you have, guys, like and subscribe always, and I'll catch you on the next one. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. video.